Uh, let us sit down. Uh, my name is Kenyajui Nganga. Uh, Jesus Christ is my personal savior. Uh, I know he brought me from very far. He found me when I was a sinner in this world. Submerged in every kind of uh, behavior. But through his mercies, he saved me. And that's why I have a witness this morning that he is my personal savior. Uh, I am a married man with a wife coding and all. And uh, if she is here, maybe she can greet you by waving you. She's my endo. <laughs> and uh, we are also blessed with uh, three grown-up children. I don't know whether they are, some of them are here. Maybe they can start at the wave. <laughs> and we also have uh, grown-up grandchildren. If then one of them is around, maybe they can greet us. But maybe they, they are not around. Uh, so that is about me. I'm, I'm an old member of this church. When I, I came to this church, there was only one row like this one on that side. And I don't think there was even uh, concrete on the floor. And there are no benches like the ones you are sitting. You are sitting on uh, off cuts. Do you know off cuts? Members, do you know the off cuts? The waste that come from the, from the timber manufacturers. When they split the timber, the, the out, is out, out pieces, uh, they are the ones you are sitting on and on a stone. So when I stand here and see this beautiful church here, I thank God for how far he has brought us. Um, having said that, uh, let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this morning we want to thank you for giving us this opportunity. A different privilege, Lord, to be here to hear your word. We want to, to thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have prepared our hearts and souls so that you can hear your word. Master, speak to us. We are, your children are listening. And in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray and believe. Amen. Uh, today, uh, I have a message for all of us. And this message is about our theme this morning is that all of us, you and I, are stewards. But as if we all of us are stewards. And uh, if that is the case, that God is reminding us and telling us that this morning we are stewards, I want to ask a question. And you can ask your neighbor, when you think of this word called steward, the word called stewardship, what comes in your mind? Just ask your neighbor, what is this uh, great, big, very huge word, heavy word called stewardship? Just ask your neighbor, yes, uh, do you understand, what is it really? God is telling us that we are stewards, all of us. You are dying. But as if we I don't I don't want you to struggle about it. Because even myself when I was told when God gave me this message, I struggled to find out the very deeper meaning of this word. And uh, 
I I want to ask the studio if they have gotten that they have gotten the, my slides just to help us to start there I have done a, a little research and I have found what it means studio did you have it oh, it's a huge one can you make it bigger then But I can, I can, I, okay, I am sure some of we are reading it. Uh, one, of the, one of the meanings of this word stewardship, it, we are told that it's, a, it's a, a way of our lives. Stewardship is a way of life. It is a, the way we live. The things that we do, our thoughts, our everything, we are stewards. And it also means utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of creation. Yeah, at least now it is it is. So you can see it is utilizing and managing all resources. God provides all resources that God provides for the glory of God at the betterment of creation. There is a dictionary there, a Bible dictionary that gave us that message. Another one is it is serving the Lord faithfully, caring for the gospel and the gifts God has given the church. That is stewardship. Another one called the, the complete Christian dictionary. That is what it tells us. And the Oxford dictionary, the, the, the one that is can be said is secular, it actually talks about it as the act of, of taking care of or managing something, for example, property, an organization, if you are a manager of an organization, you still a steward. If you are managing anything, you are a steward. Even managing money or variable objects. That is the Oxford Dictionary. And finally, okay, the, 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 just down there, it is also recognizing that everything we have and everything we are is a gift from God. Everything we have and everything we are is a gift from God. And also being grateful and generous with those gifts. It is also recognizing that God owns what is in your names. Can you tell your neighbor that? Who is next to you? Recognizing that God wants what is in your own name. God owns what is in your own name. Can you imagine what is in your name? Church. How many, how many things are in your name? Like in a door is in my name. And, uh, and my house is also in my name, maybe. And my car is also in my name. But the, God is telling us that thing that is in my name and in your name belongs to God. Amen? Therefore, we are responsible for what we do with what we have. 
We are responsible for what we for what we do with what God has given us. Bwana asifue. That is the that is the definition of that word. And as I said, as I was going through this, uh, looking for information, I met someone who had written and said, this word here, stewardship, is not very common with many Christians. And there are very many Christians who don't know it. So know it. Not even understand it, but know it. And those who understand it are very few. That is what that lady said. It was a lady who had written something to do with, uh, with uh, this word. So I don't blame you and I don't blame myself for not knowing that word. But now we have a divination. One has fear. We have a divination. Now, one question I want to ask, the second question I want to ask us, and maybe you can also find out, is about uh, uh, if you woke up this morning and you found a statement like this, or a statement that says, there is, a climat there is a climatic bomb, bomb, B O M B, under your feet. There is a climatic bomb, bomb. Here a bomb, here to you a bomb under your feet. What would you react? How would you react? You would not probably come to church because under your feet there is a bomb. How would you react? Bwana asifuwe? Bwana asifuwe church? There is a climatic bomb under your feet. Bomb under your feet. Bwana asifuwe? How do you react? I can see the, 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 the secretary is looking at me. Maybe you would run and probably run very far. Bwana asifuwe? But now, for a start, we are told that uh, the whole world is full of calamities. There are floods, we have heard of tornadoes, we have heard of typhoons, earthquakes, another one called whirlwind weeds, another one in Aitoa Upepea. Very common these days. And then we also have hurricanes, hurricanes, earthquakes, lard and mud slides. And fires, even fires, very dangerous fires. Desert nations like Dubai and Saudi Arabia have reported very heavy flooding. In fact, they were calling it uh, flash floodings. At, uh, in one day, Dubai received 140 40 millimeters of rain that they receive in 365 days. All the rain they get in a, in a year was done in a day. Uh, now then, the scientists are calling it climate change is a, is a reason for this. They are also saying global warming is also the reason for these things. But down, uh, most of the things that are happening also is about deforestation. We have cut all our trees. We have cleared all the bushes. We have invaded the wet, wetlands. Riparians, riparian areas we have invaded for the sake of concrete, high-rise buildings. So as we are talking now, 
we have taken all these things. All these things have happened. There's a lot of soil erosion in the country and the large slides. And of course, you know there is a lot of flooding as we are talking about. And it's not in Kenya. It's all over the world. What about the color of the water that we see? How present is the color of the water that is going to the Indian Ocean? How do you, what is the color? Is it as green as it comes from the, the clouds? It is red. And with all that are tons and tons and tons of our topsoils. That is what is happening. Going to actually interfere with the very clean water of the ocean. The ocean is clean, the water is very clean, but very salty. Sometimes the, uh, the, 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 the Indian Ocean water refuses to accept that water. Those who are going to a place called Sabaki, they will see there is a big fight between that water entering Indian Ocean because it's carrying a lot, tons and tons of brown our topsoil. And it's not in Kenya alone, it is all over. Now, uh, that, is, that is the situation where we are. But there is a problem with the, the world. We are blaming God for everything that is happening. We are blaming God for what is happening. Maybe we should blame our forefathers. Maybe we should blame ourselves for what is happening in the world today. Or what is happening in Kenya. We have blocked all the waterways. All the waterways. In the name of constructing homes, constructing factories, and so on, and so on, and so on. Now, so, as we, as we listen to this uh, message about uh, stewardship, uh, we need to focus and see that God has given us, every one of us has been given talents by God and gifts and we have also been given time and even resources. But the, how we deal with those, the, those gifts given to us by God is the one that gives a distinction between good stewards and bad stewards. Just like our message this is here. There is a distinction between good stewards and very bad stewards. The message we have today about the two Nebuchadnezzar and the very foolish rich man, they were very bad. They, they, they depict very bad stewards because they failed to acknowledge that everything they are and everything they have belongs to God. That is the story we have, that, that is the, the message we have today of those two that we have read now. But I want also to say that uh, As I said, there, will be, there is a distinction between good stewards and bad stewards. Because these two, as we will see later, they were bad stewards. Because a good steward, as we have seen, recognizes that anything that they own, anything that they are, belongs to God. So he himself is a product of God. Everything he owned, including his own palace, belonged to God. Long, uh, immediately after I got this message and I started looking for this message, 
and maybe information about it, I found the, the 24th GA General Assembly in the, past, in the pastoral letter which was read here by our secretary, two things came, two things came from that uh, pastoral letter. The pastoral letter actually talked to, uh, to, the, to the congregations about taking care of environment and planting trees. That was in the pastoral letter, taking care of the environment and planting trees. And where possible, we plant trees that are fruit trees, trees that you can use for any other use, but you still have food coming from that, those trees. The other thing they also talked about is integrity in handling church resources. I hope you heard, uh, uh, like, just like I heard it. But as secretary, I think it, that was in, our, in the pastoral letter. Yeah? Two things. Environment. We take care of our environment. Plant trees. But plant trees that, are, uh, that give us fruits. Not just uh, any ordinary trees. But we also consider many other things. So, and this came later after I had already started preparing for this message. So this morning I can, I can really assure you that God is talking to us about taking care of this gift that God gave us, the environment. Now, as we talk of those, those uh, calamities, I want to say that this word that we have talked about now, uh, it has, it is loaded with a very heavy, other very heavy terms, which I can call attributes of a good steward. Because like I said, there is a distinction between good stewards and bad stewards. One thing that uh, is for sure is that this, a good steward is a responsible person. He has, he has responsibility. You are given responsibility and you have to do in accordance with that responsibility. A good steward also has integrity integrity. A good steward is also accountable. Accountable. And I don't know, I don't know when you, when we take, for example, I just want to give an example. If I came to Mr. Jaramba and I wanted him to lend me some money, and Mr. Jaraba is my friend. And I'm sure he will me money. Now the question is, how do I pay that money? Do I pay it? Do I meet the obligations as we have agreed with Mr. Jaraba? And I want to ask another question. When you are a member of a group or you are a leader of a group, or you are the treasurer of a, a church group. And you have gone for a retreat. You have taken your group to Mobasa for a retreat. And you have gone to the, tre to the accountant. And the accountant has told you, has given you all the monies that you needed. When you come back from Mobasa, for example, how do you account for that money? Do you, in the first place, account for that money? Does our accountant record that you have brought that money? You have accounted for that money, the way you spent it. Hey, unaniona? Hebu nisalimia tu? 
This is the message God is giving us. Accountability. You have to be accountable. Accountable for your group. Accountable for the people you are given to take care of. Accountability is so important for a good steward. Then we have transparency. That part, you, if you are, a, 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 if, a, if you are, if you are a, a good steward, you must be transparent. And the other one is that you must be faithful. Faithfulness is so important if you have to be counted among the faithfuls of Jesus Christ. That at one moment, if we go to heaven, God will tell us, welcome my faithful servant. You are so faithful when you are in the, on, the, on the earth. Then we also need somebody who is, who is loyal. Loyal. Come on, remember a group. You are supposed to be loyal to that group. You are supposed to be loyal. Then we have to, you are, you are required to have a self controlled person. A person who has self control. Then gentleness, respectability, and spiritual maturity. That is the positive part of that particular person who, is, who can say that they are, they are good stewards. So for, on, the other, on the other hand, we are also talking about that other person who does not meet these, meet these uh, attributes. And some of, some of those things are, uh, such people you will find that they are very boastful. They are boastful. They are self-focused. Very self-focused. Akifikiria tu, anaona tu ajenga nyumba pahali muto inapitia. He doesn't care whether later on you'll be drowned by that water. Provided he has put a, a, a magnificent house that uh, later on will be a, a problem to the people. But then, uh, we are now talking that the opposite of that, that, that uh, good person are all those the, the negatives of those, those attributes you have mentioned. So the question is, you or I, where do we belong? If you are told to, if you are asked to account for your life, account for your family, because we have been told we are managers. In fact, it's not that we are even managers, but we are a uh, Jesus actually called, uh, God called, uh, called us, he called us, uh, we, are, we, were, we, are, we are called uh, aliens, we are aliens, yani, wageni, this is wageni, this is wageni katika dunia hii yetu. And uh, that was God talking to the Israelites when he was telling them they should not, uh, they should not cultivate the land throughout. No, they should not sell the land. There is nothing like selling the land. So God says that we are uh, aliens and tenants. That is the word I was looking for. Aliens in, on this world. Again, a heto keri. Na iyo jina igine ina itoje. When you are when you are on your way, you, you don't belong to some place, but you are passing by. Eh? Ena daburo, I can see. I saw by love. Eh? Eh? Agedi. Turi agedi. So God is saying we are aliens. Agedi. And another word he has also used is tenants. 
So can you see the difference between a tenant and a landlord? That is what God is telling us. We are tenants in, the, in God's vineyard. So, while we are there then, I want to go now to look at these two guys and uh, the ones we are now saying, they were, they were very bad uh, they were very bad stewards. So, having just seen that one, the, the first one that we have read is about Daniel, uh, is, is in Daniel, Daniel 5. And in Daniel chapter 5, from 18 to 23. And what we have learned is that... Uh, Daniel was addressing a new king. He had, already in, he had already advised the king of Babylon about his visions. <laughs> Sorry. And the visions, he was told about it, but there was another thing that he was told to do. that he must repent his sins because he was, a, he was a very bad king really he must repent his sins uh, studio if you can give us Daniel 4 Daniel 4 27 we can hear what Daniel told the king when he was told he is going to eat grass He's going to be eating grass for seven years, but he did not seem to repent. Yes, from, from 7 to 27 to 30, you can see what he says. So then, Your Majesty, follow my advice. Stop sinning, do what is right, and be merciful to the poor. Then you will continue to be prosperous. Wakati wa meabiwa doto yake, he was supposed to be, he was now in that state where he, he, he alikuwa meabiwa kabisa kabisa, ataenda kukura nyasi for seven years. And, and that is what Daniel actually told him. That young man from, uh, that, that Hebrew boy uh, from Jerusalem. These boys were said that they were uh, they, were, they were actually teenagers when they were taken to Babylon by this king. About 20, 28. All this did happen to King Nebuchadnezzar. The next one, very quickly. Only 12 months later, only 12 months later, while he was walking about on the roof of his royal palace in Babylon, he said, look how great Babylon is. I built it as my capital city to display my power and might, my glory and majesty. You are going to eat gravel like horses and cows for seven years. Na memaliza mwaka muzima. Na sasa, that is what he's saying. The next one. Yeah, this is that one. Have you seen that? You will be, okay. He said, oh, look how great Babylon is. I built it. Oh, that is that. Now, look at that message. That one actually is just saying, before, he, before the words were out of his mouth, a voice spoke from heaven. Heaven. King, Nab Nab okay, King Nab Nebuchadnezzar, listen to what I say. Your royal power is now taken away from you. So, 
That is, that is Nebuchadnezzar. The second one is about this. God, uh, Jesus is calling him a rich, is it foolish? A foolish, rich man. Now, what does that one do? Maybe you can go back to uh, that one on... Uh, Look, look 12. Studio. Look 12. But maybe even without without that, we can we can still remember what we have re what has been read. This person was a rich man and he was a very good farmer and so he produced a lot of crop and uh, after he had produced a lot of that crop he was asking now he was he was contemplating what to do because of the bumper harvest that he had been given but who had who had given him that bumper harvest then he said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to destroy all my granaries or stores. Because they are small, then I can build another one, bigger ones. And then he told his soul, sit and eat and relax. Sit and eat and relax. But we are told that the same night. Yeah, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build the biggest ones where I restore my corn and all my other goods. Then I will say to myself, lucky man, you have all the good things you need for many years. Take your life easy. Eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. That is what the guide said. But we are also told that you fool, that is what God did. This very night you will have to give up your life. Then who will get all these things you have kept for yourself? <laughs> As we started, I started say, by saying one of the attributes of uh, these managers, by the way, it is, we are also called caretakers. We take care of other people's and God's properties. So this caretaker, Jesus actually said this is how it is with those who pile up riches for themselves, but, are not, but are, they are not rich in God's sight. Now, where we started, as I, as I come to conclude, is we, were, we started with seeing where we belong. Our situation, our current situation. Our current situation. And then we have also been told that we are caretakers of everything that is in our hearts. If you are a, a group member, you have been given people and members to take care of, to dream about them. Leadership is about dreaming. Leadership is about uh, visioning for the others. Because the others cannot come in your meeting all the time. So if you are a chairman, you dream for the people. And those are, so those are people given to you by God. Um, so, Having uh, done that, I want to just mention a few things. Um, this, this man called Nebuchadnezzar, this man called Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he ate grass for seven years. But God had already promised him that he restore his kingdom after he had eaten grass for eight years. But when he came back to his senses, he was able to, to remember, he was able to uh, acknowledge 
that God is indeed in charge of all the do, 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 dominions in the world. So whether it's a king, whether it is a, wherever you are, you could be a, a CEO in an office, but God owns that, that job that you are holding. And he can take it away from you. If you are given a responsible office, a desk and a chair, and a computer, there must be a reason why God has kept you in that office. Maybe you are there as a civil servant. Don't leave the coat on the, on the, on the chair for three days. What does it feel? And then the, the, the community, the members are coming to see you, they cannot find you in the office. If you are a teacher, again you have responsibility. Yeah? Take charge of the class. Take charge of your, of your team. If you even are a head teacher, you have the people, the staff, the students to take care of. That is what stewardship is all about. So, my dear brothers and sisters, the purpose, I think God was speaking to us this morning so that we can reflect on our lives. Katikati ya hizo mneno zote tumetaja about stewardship, transparency, integrity. Are we clean? Am I clean? on all those issues that you have mentioned. Is there, a, is there a reason why I can go back to my God and ask for forgiveness? Just like Nebuchadnezzar was asked by Daniel, you need to repent your sins. So for me, I don't know why God had sent me with that message, but if it has, it has touched you, and it has touched me also, as I did it here and even before. I need to reflect on my life. How have I interacted with the, commun with the, with the other people? How have I interacted with the environment? How have I, how have I interacted with anything that surrounds me? Because that is what God wants us to remember. May God bless you all for that, for listening to me. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to thank you. We want to glorify your holy name for speaking to us, Heavenly Father, about our responsibilities and about being a good steward. Lord, we pray that you will visit us in a special way so that even when we think about this word lord you your holy spirit will help us to understand it even more and act upon it as in accordance with your will we thank you and glorify your name and in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ we do pray and believe may god bless you